Our final time in Kruger National Park was spent in the southernmost reaches, around Lower Sabi and Bergendal. And these two regions couldn't really be much more strikingly different from one another, or indeed from the other regions of the park we'd already visited. Lower Sabi is characterised by wide open savannas, and Bergendal by mountains. Both regions, however, have a significant number of watering holes and an absolutely astonishing array of bird life. The African wattled lapwing just shown certainly has striking facial features, but I do think the spoonbill is the victor in that particular field. The well-positioned bird hides around Lower Sabi in particular, and the abundance of bird life in the area, owing to the Sabi River, grants an unparalleled opportunity to observe these birds in their native habitats without disturbing them. This is particularly important for the woodland kingfisher. Historically, I have found kingfishers to be a singularly difficult species to record, and one of the reasons for this is that they are aggressively territorial and will attack humans, given the size of that beak and their evident willingness to use it as a weapon, I didn't fancy getting involved. The wood sandpipers and greenback herons that we observed in this area were also far more natural in their behaviours than we'd observed previously. In the wood sandpipers, this meant a truly excellent opportunity to again observe their natural behaviour, which is this peculiar being motion as they walk, which is just as charming as it has been previously. And for the green heron, this meant a wonderful opportunity to study their striking coloration and vibrant green feathers up close. Correctly called the green-backed heron, you can see the hints of green in their feathers along their back. But when the light catches them just right, the crest on their heads and their wing coverts also show this gorgeously iridescent colour. Whilst these are small birds, certainly, at around 40 to 45 centimetres tall, they certainly can give off the impression of being somewhat larger than life. When startled, they will raise their crests, and their stalking around the edges of the pools gives quite an aggressive cast. Eventually, the wildlife in the hide became so accustomed to our presence that it actually came to visit us inside. And I was so taken by this tree squirrel in particular that I almost forgot to film. The areas around Lower Sabi and Bergendal are both very well watered during the rainy seasons. Bergendal itself is mountainous and thus sees quite significant quantities of rainfall, and Lower Sabi is supplied by the Sabi River. As has been noted previously, elephants require vast quantities of water, so being nearby it wherever possible makes sense for them, especially when they have juveniles, who are less tolerant of thirst than their adult counterparts. Considering that an adult male elephant has been known to consume up over 200 litres of water in less than five minutes, sometimes it is a wonder there's enough to go around. Most adult elephants, however, will typically consume about 100 litres of water daily, however. Mostly, these juvenile elephants seem to be interested in cooling down rather than drinking the water, however, which presumably indicates that their matriarch is particularly adept at leading them from waterhole to waterhole without leaving them thirsty in the middle. As one would expect, with an area so heavily crisscrossed by watercourses, occasionally the elephants must cross these courses themselves. And wherever the juveniles are involved, this is done with the utmost care and attention. In this particular instance, 
this adult elephant had actually crossed the river itself already on its own and then returned to collect the youngster in order to guide it on the safest path. It's not entirely clear whether the youngster appreciated this effort being done on its behalf. It seemed to be predominantly interested in playing with the water as it walked through, much like any human child, really. Where Lower Sabi surprised us in particular, however, was the density of predators present. Some we had encountered previously, like this black backed jackal, although we had an opportunity to observe them in a behaviour we hadn't anticipated. black backed jackals are clearly canid in appearance, and are distantly related to the wolves and foxes which they resemble, and a number of the ways in which they behave are similar to both groups of animals. black backed jackals are quite small members of the canid family, and typically weigh less than 13 kilograms and stand less than 50 centimeters tall at the shoulder. Despite their small size, however, they are accomplished hunters and will take up to an adult impala significantly taller and heavier than they are. This individual, however, did not appear to be interested in hunting or, considering its omnivorous nature, interested in eating the eggs, which you can see in the lower left of the frame. Instead, and irritatingly mere moments after this footage ended, this jackal proceeded to scent mark the eggs and then leave the area. We also saw a number of hyena around Lower Sabi and Bergendal, always alone or in small groups, however, and again, largely uninterested in hunting, they were instead predominantly occupied by avoiding the extreme heat of the day, such as this one, mud bathing. Lions could also be found around Lower Sabi and Bergendal, and based on the numbers we have to assume in this region of the park they were doing exceptionally well. However, there were a number of oddities in our encounters with the lions around Lower Sabi particularly. A pair of males shown in the previous footage were startling enough, given that they were less than 20 metres away from our vehicle. However, a couple of days later, when we went out again, we noticed that one of the same pair of lions had actually emerged from the scrub alongside our vehicle and was keeping pace with us. This individual in particular could be readily identified as it has a rather distinctive dark scar on its right hindquarters. We believe that this male is older due to the significant scarring present over his body and evidence of some damage to his bone and indeed spine from past conflict. Nevertheless, this individual was particularly sure of himself and paid us no attention whatsoever. We also had the unusual, if somewhat, again, startling privilege of counting lionesses at night. The pair that we observed, one of which was hidden quite well in the bushes, were tucking into some form of kill. It's not clear exactly what they'd had, although based on size, it may have been a young impala. Unfortunately, our time in the Kruger National Park had to end eventually, and in a rather pleasing sense of completion, we ended it much as it had begun, observing the weavers. The weavers around Lower Sabi were particularly unconcerned by the presence of humans and built their nests within feet of the edge of the camp, granting an unrivaled opportunity to observe them in close detail. We were lucky enough to observe this particular individual building the nest over the course of several days, and therefore saw it develop from a few strands of loosely attached grass into this already impressive construction that the bird did not appear to consider finished, or at least potential romantic partners did not consider finished. 